Okay, so in this first video, what we're going to be looking at uh, is two things that basically use the same tool in Microsoft Excel. We're going to talk first of all about how to obtain your table of descriptive statistics. The table of descriptive statistics, often referred to as summary statistics, they give you all kinds of, of numerical information that describe your sample data. So they give you the mean, the mode, the median, these various measures of central tendency, different measures of the location of that distribution, and then they'll give you measures of the shape of the distribution. So the standard deviation, the variance, the standard error, um, range, min, minimum value, maximum, a whole set of values that describe your sample data. So we'll do that first. Then, because it uses the same tool in Excel, we'll also look at how to obtain intervals, confidence intervals. Now, in this series of videos, I'm not going to be giving any instruction on how to interpret these or the underlying theory behind, let's say, an interval. How is it that that interval may contain the true population value? I've got other videos that speak more specifically to how to calculate these by hand and really how to interpret them uh, and a little bit more of the underlying theory of how they work and what they are. Here we're focusing on using Microsoft Excel to obtain these values. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I'll pull up a data set that I have produced. This data set has no meaning. It's just a set of values. So when you're working on an assignment or some practice problems or something like this, this data probably has some context, probably has some meaning behind it. Here again, I'm focusing on the how to get the results. I'm not going to talk about what the results mean here. Uh, we'll just focus on how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to come into uh, data up at the top and come to my data analysis um, set of tools. Now, these are all sorted alphabetically. The one that I want here is my descriptive statistics. I'm going to hit OK. Now, here this will come up as blank. I've already been playing with it, so I've got some values here. So what you need to do first, select your input range. So here I'm going to select everything. And notice I'm including my labels. I've included A, B, C, D, and E. Now, I have to make sure that I tell Excel that I've picked up those labels. If I don't, it's just going to give me an error because it says I've, something, is, something is wrong here, even if I give it that. Okay, it's still going to say non-numeric data. Okay, I get some errors. So what I need to do is tell Excel I selected the labels. So in the first row, I've got those labels. Okay, I need to give it an output range where to put that output. Let's put it over here. And what is it that I want? I want summary statistics. Okay, that's going to give me all of the descriptive statistics describing my sample data. Now, if I want to produce confidence intervals as well, well, I might as well click this button here, confidence level for the mean. What level of confidence do I want? 90, 95, 99, whatever level of confidence you want your intervals to be, you enter that value here. Okay, I hit OK. And now I've got my output. It's ugly. It's way more than what I want. It's way more than anybody would want. Excel just kind of regurgitates all the information. Here's everything. But what I expect my students to do is to clean this up into something that's a little more aesthetically pleasing, a little bit more professional looking. So the first thing that I do is get rid of all of these labels. I don't need all of these labels here and here and here. All I need is one label for each of the columns and one label for each of the rows. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move these over so that these labels are above the, the numbers. Then I'm gonna select all of these values here, whoops. 
holding down on my Mac book, I'm holding down the command key. If you're using a Windows, you're going to hold down the control key so that you can select multiple columns. And I'm going to delete all of those. So now my tables coming together it looks a little bit better. Next thing, I don't want five decimal places. Depending on what you're working on, depending on your instructor, um, different instructors might want different things. Personally, I rarely ever want more than two or at most three decimal places in those tables. And you'll notice by reducing the decimal places, again, the table just looks nicer. Now, the next thing that I ask my students to do is, I just double click there to spread that out so that I can see those names. Next thing that I ask students to do is to get rid of nonsense. Get rid of things that are not relevant for the discussion uh, in your assignment, in your problem. So when I look at this, you know, there's no mode. So I don't, I don't need that. I always ask my students to have at least one measure of central tendency, one measure of location, one measure of shape, and sample size. A minimum three things in that table of descriptive statistics. So if I'm going to stick to just those three things, well, I'm going to keep the mean. I like having the average in there. I might add the median if it's quite different from the mean. If the median is very different from the mean, that can give me a little bit of information about whether or not that distribution is skewed to one side or another. Let's say here I don't really care. I'm just going to get rid of those. I'm going to hold down here the control, um, my command key again. On a Windows PC, it would be the control key. And I'm going to get rid of a few things. Kurtosis, skewness, I don't need that. The range, the range is the difference between um, the highest value and the lowest value. Uh, in the data set. So it's really just a difference between my min and max. Maybe I'll want to keep that. Let's keep that for now. It's up to you. Let's get rid of the sum count. That's my sample size. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these things, delete those, shift those cells up. It's going to compress my table. And there we go. Now, this is still not a table of descriptive statistics confidence level. That's not a descriptive statistic. This last row is here only because when I use this command, I clicked this button here for that confidence level. If I didn't, let's just put this somewhere else just so you can see. If I did not click that, you'll notice there is no confidence level. It's only there because I asked for that. It's, it's separate from the descriptive statistics. It does not belong with any table of descriptive statistics. That is there for the intervals. Okay, and I'll come back to that in just one second. So here I have a nice looking table. It's concise. It's got all of the descriptive statistics that I want it to have. I can maybe pretty it up. I can add some some lines, whatever you want to it. And now I can copy and paste that table directly into my Word document because Microsoft Excel and Word, they're just, they're so well integrated, it's easy to do that, okay? And then you might make some comments. Typically, I ask my students to provide some observations. What do you see when you look at those descriptive statistics? And again, here, I'm focusing on Excel. I'm not getting into the interpretation. But certainly what I can see here is that as the mean is increasing, it looks like those standard deviations are decreasing. That may be something interesting, depending on the context of the problem. Okay, so that's it for the descriptive statistics. Now, for the confidence interval, remember what we need is a lower limit and an upper limit of that interval. If I just really quickly come over here, when we're doing an interval for a single population mean, that formula is the sample mean plus minus some critical value and a standard error. Now, my other videos will get into how to calculate these by hand and what all of these mean and using the t-tables and all of this fun stuff. Here, I'm not going to get into that. 
but we need to understand the components of the interval so that we know how to produce it in Excel. I know that right in the middle is that sample mean. Here I have an upper limit, here I have a lower limit. Well, that distance between the mean and the upper limit is exactly this value here, which is called, as we know, this is the margin of error. Well, wouldn't you know it? Excel doesn't call it the margin of error. Excel calls it confidence level. And so what we have here, and if it's easier for you to do this, to remember, you can change the, the labels. This is the margin of error for a 95% interval. And so in order to produce my intervals, if I want an upper limit and a lower limit, I need to take that mean and add a margin of error to get the upper limit and take that mean and subtract a margin of error to obtain the lower limit. So I'm just going to enter in that formula. So anytime you're entering a formula into an Excel cell, it starts with equals. So it's going to equal this mean. I'm going to use a cell reference. I'm just going to click on that. Now here I'm doing the upper limit. So this is the mean plus that margin of error. Enter. And the lower limit is equal to the mean minus that margin of error. Enter. So there's one confidence interval. Now, if I want to produce it for all five of these samples, this little box right here, see how my cursor changes when I'm over that little box? I'm going to click and I'm just going to drag that over. And voila, it's done. I've got all of my intervals. You can see here it's updated those cell references as I dragged it across. So now I've got my intervals. If I was going to put this into an Excel, document, I would copy those labels down. You can add some nice lines to it, whatever you like. And there I have a table consisting of, in this example, five confidence intervals, one for each of these five samples. Okay, so that gets you through some of the basics. For my students, this is usually one of the first two things that you would have to do on your assignments. Produce that table of descriptive statistics. In your assignment, you'll probably have to interpret that, add some value, add some meaning to those numbers. And here we've got those confidence intervals. Again, likely you'll have to interpret those once more here. I don't have any context. We're focusing on the how to obtain those values using Excel. Okay, one more little detail before I leave. Remember I said when we used this uh, data analysis tool, the descriptive statistics tool, how I highlighted my labels and then I had to click here to tell Excel. If I didn't click, I got an error, right? What happens if I don't select my labels? If I don't select my labels, I need to make sure that I do not click that box. This way, Excel will produce that table of descriptive statistics and it just creates its own labels, column one, column two, column three. What I sometimes see my students do, because they always see me clicking this box and I talk about clicking this box, they click that box and then they hit OK. And do we see what has happened here? Look at those labels. Excel has taken, I'm just going to hide this stuff so we can look at these closely. Excel has taken the first data point and did exactly what you told it to do, used it as a label. And so now all of my values are going to be off by just a little bit. My sample sizes are off because I have 27 observations. Here it says 26 because it's picking up one of those observations as a label. And all of these values, if I unhide this, where my mean should be 
0.922, now it's getting 29.2, where I should have 27 observations, I have 26 observations. So it's a really common mistake. Make sure that you avoid that one. Make sure that when you select your data, select the labels, and then tell Excel that you've picked up those labels, and then you will get exactly what you want. Okay. That is it. Thank you all for watching. I hope that that was helpful. Okay, bye-bye.